You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Successful Screenwriter Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything screenwriting. Here we interview successful screenwriters and filmmakers to find out just what it takes to make it in the industry. Just a heads up, this episode is brought to you by my book, The Guide for Every Screenwriter, which has been listed as one of the best screenwriting books of all time by the Book Authority. If you're looking for something that reveals the secrets of screenwriting in an easy to understand and engaging way, then this is the book for you. You can find The Guide for Every Screenwriter at thesuccessfulscreenwriter.com slash books now. On to the show. All right, welcome to the podcast. I actually have a really cool guest on today. This is pretty exciting. This isn't anything that uh, we've had on the show yet, um, but I thought like this will be an inevitability that eventually I'm going to get somebody who can talk about this because it's super cool. My guest today is Jeff Gross, and Jeff, I want to just give us a little bit about what you do. Sure. I am a product placement supervisor on feature films on movies, so... <laughs> That's, that's awesome. what I do. That's what I've done for years. And I, uh, I'm hired by the each independent movie and I work on behalf of the movie and getting product placement deals, uh, mutually beneficial deals with brands for the productions. For so you, you get to actually like read the script, right? And then kind, yes. and kind of find out where you can work a product into the script. Yeah, actually, it's even it's more organic. Even. OK, uh, but no, I mean, Yes, what you said is correct, where I can fit something in. But in reality, I'm reading a script and I'm just going through it and they pick up a drink. You know, they're having beer yeah. at a, in this one movie I was thinking of. And they're just having a beer uh, at, a, at, um, at a barbecue backyard, the two main okay. actors. So that's where I see, I pop that up. I read that in the script. I circle it and I go, opportunity. Awesome. And I go through the script. Then I think of all the creative opportunities where organic integration would come into play okay i love that i love the terminology you're giving me before yeah. we dive deeper into creative opportunities and the organic process of this i want to get a little bit of your origin story like what led you to this i think honestly a pretty cool career yeah well i th and, well thanks <laughs> i always loved uh, entertainment movies especially comedies growing up in new york and uh, but I wanted to work in in movies or something, and I didn't know what what I was doing. I was a teenager, and there was a show. Bill Maher had a show back back like in ninety oh god ninety six maybe called Politically Incorrect. It was on oh, Comedy yeah. Central. Nobody that's saw right. it. It was a tiny little thing before it was a thing. So I was like, that's the low hanging fruit. So I constantly tried to i was constantly calling the office it was in columbus circle in new york constantly saying can i be an intern can i be a can i be a, a pa on the show they kept saying no you know the guy's name was derek i think production coordinator he kept saying no we're full thanks you don't have any uh, experience thanks anyway i would send them my resume constantly i was relentless nice really bored in college sorry don't drop out i'm just saying <laughs> so i kept i kept faxing i kept Finally, every two weeks, I call the guy, Derek, and I say, is an opportunity? He goes, no, Jeff, I really, you know, I'm leaving this job. I'm going to movies, not TV, movies, and I really appreciate your tenacity, but we have nothing for you. Good luck, whatever. Uh, someone named Elizabeth is taking over my role. So I wait about two weeks. I call. I say, is Derek there? He says, uh, this, she says, uh, Elizabeth says, uh, no, my name's Elizabeth, and I've taken uh, his position. How can I help you? And I said, uh, what, what are you talking about? You know, I, I was supposed to start with Derek as an intern. Uh, you don't have any <laughs> notes like that. She goes, no, no, nothing like that. I go, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Check the resume draw. She goes, she goes, Oh, your first one here. I'm so sorry. Come in on Monday. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend this folks. And that was just uh, my really antsy, uh, you know, I wish I could be a writer. I, I don't have any glue for my seats. You know what I mean? So you got on set. I admire you people. Yes. So, so you got on set. And mm -hmm. I mean, how did, how did it go? 
then it led to me yeah they're fine they didn't know any different then bill introduced me to jay leno in la back when that was a huge thing and i he's like yeah come on i'll bring you on as an assistant whatever but i met the uh what turned out to be the production supervisor of a a disney picture see back with touchstone was a was an back when disney used to make like 10 15 million dollar pictures like comedies an r-rated movie called roman michelle's high school reunion and uh i met him he's now the president of disney production but anyway and i ended up just he said you want to work on this i ended up working for him and movie to movie and they said jeff you would be great i worked on that and then i worked on a movie called truman show with them for like a year and a half Wow, I saw a private screening of the Truman Show before they did a theatrical release. I was part of a test audience for that. Did you see the intro? Were you one of the few? Oh, my God. I, because I, here's the thing. I'd have, to, I'd have to have my memory jarred, but I remember filling out the card and being part of the test audience. Did you like it? I thought the, I thought the ending was so powerful that I did, I did give it a good but I don't remember... The intro. Oh, it's okay. No, because it had a real terrible beginning. It had 45 minutes. So Peter Weir was the director, and he's he uh his intent was that the audience was going to find out Truman was on a show at the same time that we did. But that was BS because it's on the poster, everybody was gonna know. So yeah. the first 45 minutes of the film, they just lopped that off in editing. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that. So I think it's I must okay. have, I must it's have all right. saw Let's the... not talk. We'll go. We'll, we'll circle back. I'll tell you the secret of how they did the intro to Truman Show and saved a, a movie. Awesome. But so anyway, but after that, they went, Jeff, do you really want to go in production? You'd be really good at deal making. I go, but I'm not a suit. I don't like that. I like working on movies. So it just sort of became organic that when I started to deal with, they made me the point person for Coca-Cola and I became friends with the head of entertainment market Coca-Cola and I relished the job and I did a great job and um, it just sort of stuck as my thing. And I like making people happy and I like, I like making deals and saving productions money and helping scripts uh, get made by uh, giving advice, probably the way you would, but I do it from a production resources standpoint. Interesting. You know? Yeah. I think it's uh, one. Uh, I, yeah. I love the fact that you, you got yourself on set and then you proved your metal, which I think yeah. is, is awesome because had you, you know, got yourself on set in a shady way and then you couldn't prove your metal. Well, there you go. But you did it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to endorse it. <laughs> no, no, no. I <laughs> don't I endorse anything, that... <laughs> uh, anything from 1996 but... anymore, but I, <laughs> well, uh... come on, but I, you know, I'm an acid wash jeans could come back. So, but I, I do love the fact that, uh, that you're able to make it happen. So you got into product placement. Give me, yes. give me the skinny on that. Like, I think that with working with a, a, a product placement supervisor and, and, giving them an advanced knowledge that you're going to be coming in with some deal. See, this is mostly about today. It's, it's a lot of it is about what do distributors want and how much, what do you have ready to go? Okay. So uh, from a screenwriter's point of view, especially if you're working with a producer who understands, for example, if you're writing a sci-fi movie, that's big budget, it's going to be tougher for me to give you advice because those are, harder if i'm as a producer as you probably know we're writing we're writing an indie film give me give yeah. me the skinny on we're that. writing an indie film it's modern day yeah let's just say it takes place in america uh, first of all like normal stuff when you're writing you don't want to do anything that's going to be that you know production wise it's mostly about thinking in terms of getting it made okay it's like a lot of other things so it's it's the same as don't write anything that practically will cost way too much money in a script for the value it is so reduce your like like reduce your locations maybe uh it could be that or it could be let's say there is a you're working and the film revolves around an industry okay your main character is in an industry here's a good example i think so whatever the story is you're one of your lead characters 
is in an industry that they are, whether it be a product industry or a service industry. Okay. Yeah. Think about that and maybe try to stick with some continuity there. For example, uh, product people generally like, especially I'll, I'll speak about Coca-Cola. Let's just talk about that. Yeah. That, that brand. Um, a lot of it is about it, it, it's if it's a Coca-Cola film and they're providing Coke in exchange for exposure, they'll want to see that it's a Coke movie. You keep Pepsi stuff out. So number one is Loyalty, keeping some yeah. co continuity going where it's organic, you know? Okay. So in America, popping a Coke is very simple, but don't switch brands. Yeah. Also, another thing is if you're in an industry and you hope to work with them in terms of product placement and or after aftermarket uh, uh, promotion, co-branding, which is ideally because brands brands love movies. You got yeah. any movie news? If they supplied anything for your movie, they want to promote it on all of their social media channels. So, if there's something that's featured that it, not necessarily, I'm, not a, I'm using the wrong word. I'm not a writer. It's not the MacGuffin, but it could be something like that where it's right. Whatever that is, it's special. A uh, special thing. Uh, it's it's easier to review your own script and go, oh, I, I may see some opportunity. Maybe we can work with this this company. You know, there are a lot of services. Along You're brand, making so. me think of like Zombie Land and his mm -hmm. his forever search to find a Twinkie. There you go. There you go. You know what I mean. And and the entire crew had hostess cupcakes every day now here's the thing you know we joke oh they did a twinkie i doubt hostess wrote a check for that believe it or not but the craft service so anybody working on a movie you know craft service got tons of hostess products for free so yeah. if that movie costs 40 million to make you say believe it or not tens of thousands of dollars on snacks for craft service oh wow and it was simply product and exchange for exposure. So let's say I asked, for okay. example, on that one, I asked for a check for $50,000 from Hostess, right? Mm -hmm. What's the best case scenario in my mind? They're going to write a check for 50 grand. Number one, I can't promise final cut that they'll be in it. So why am I taking money? And the most important thing is I'm going to turn around and buy $50,000 worth of, sorry, I love you, Hostess, crap for my uh, crew to eat. Yeah. So what does it actually cost hostess to provide me with all of their entire line of snacks for craft service? What does it cost hostess? Yeah. About 20 bucks plus labor. I didn't even consider the fact that if you were to use a brand like that, that you could save on budget for the mm -hmm. crew. So I think that is a really interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. That's the big secret. It's eye opening. So See, when I, go ahead. Yeah. When I join a film, that's the main thing I say. I say, look, I'm here to save you money. If they say, hey, Jeff, we want a sponsorship from, I can stop them right there. Yeah. I don't go get money. I will save you tens of thousands of dollars, lots, usually if it's a bigger movie, a lot more, by simply uh, replacing what the prop uh, person has to create. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If we made a deal with this company, that prop, I will take care of that for you. You don't have to create fake beer in your bottle. The, yeah. the, the company will do it for me. And since they're located where we're doing the movie, they're going to uh, host uh, the wrap party for free. See, now you've got me thinking about beyond just products like i'm thinking if you want to shoot in a lo like a shooting location maybe you, you find go. a gas station mm -hmm. right and then you exchange their exposure for a free shooting location there you go and that's that's a great example so let's let's look at the gas station example which is is a very unsexy example by the way but you you hey you we're talking indie screen no you're right here, i'm man. excited you know what <laughs> what was the one the bill bill and ted right yeah circle K the circle K, man. Something's a foot so, in the circle K. There's always, see, there's always something for something. So that's a perfect example is renting out a gas station for what you just described. Shutting it down costs the production money. Yeah. Hey, in exchange for the exposure, why not lay out a couple of different locations? Let's get, let's say you're in a BP, Exxon, and yeah. Sunoke, I don't know. We'll just make up whatever. 
right? Why not talk to all their PR departments and say, which one, where do you have a location near me where we can film in exchange for exposure? They'll pounce, they'll jump over themselves to arrange it for you. I love it. But people don't always think of that. Location managers running this way, prop guys running this way. Yeah. And I think it's great. Yeah. So definitely uh, keep that in mind, especially so, as if you're a writer producer. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's a great, that's a great combo. And that, and there are plenty of that. I mean, I know yeah. writers themselves that are like, you know what, I don't want to direct this thing, but I want to get it made and they become the producer. Yeah. And, and it allows them to have more control over the project as well. Yes. So there is a lot of validity to being a hyphenate writer, writer, producer. Imagine if you're a writer and you say, I'm coming in with a hundred grand, by the way. Yeah. It, you, you're treated differently. Yeah. So I would consult a product place and supervisor, you know, I and love maybe it. even brands want to, it's like if a brand nowadays, especially where content is everywhere and there is a genre there is something for almost every genre that i can think of which is both frustrating and a wonderful opportunity um that your genre there is a brand out there where your demographic and their demographic matches perfectly Love it. and there's no way that they can get directly in front of your audience your demographic that you're creating this entertainment for than organic integration yeah Brands love it. Brands love it. Well, talk to me about, say you get that product placement supervisor and, and yes. we've talked about exposure and I love this and I think it, it is eye-opening. So any mm -hmm. writer, producer out there listening to this, this is amazing. How do you get pay? Because we've just talked about, okay, this is exposure. We can, get, we can get free sets. We can get free craft service. We can save a ton of money that way. How do you uh -huh. get a brand to pay? Is this well, that's, because you have a relationship? You mean to participate, a brand to yeah. participate. Well, that's that's kind of where that's my job. That's where I come. Okay, in, right. All I right. mean, they call it, they they do. I mean, I, I do go to set on this last picture I worked on here in uh, around the Austin, Texas area, and the craft service guy. I'm not bragging. He bowed to me because he hadn't met me before. He bowed when he because he coke came up and all that. You know, he just had everything that he didn't have to bow buy his his yeah. budget on this six million five million dollar picture just you know, his budget, he could double his budget yeah. based on what I was doing for him. Um, so a good product placement supervisor has these yeah. relationships already kind of yes. founded and, and you're really bringing them on to, to leverage that, right? Yes. So Excellent. usually the way that I work is you hire me to pay. I'm not saying to do this, by the way. This is I'm actually, I'm actually not promoting myself, um, but they hire me because, you say, know, larger, I think you should hire them. Yeah, well, there you go. All right. But they could they have a larger budget where maybe they put product place of supervisor in the budget, smaller independent movies, which I'm enjoying more. And I want to help smaller pictures, 2 million to 10 million to 15 to 30, where they they're not thinking about product placement. So in advance, you know, so I'm trying to help movies that don't have a line item for product placement people in advance and I want to help more movies rather than work on one movie for six months now I'd rather help a lot of productions just get what they need and that's what I'm working on right now I I can't do 95 percent 95 percent of my job is researching all of the brands that may want to participate in this particular production so what and are I, you what are you yeah. doing what have what have you what have you created to like make that yes happen? So brands facing camera. Okay. This this was because this was demanded by <laughs> the brands that I was working with. Okay. The high level brands and the uh, various um, the crew members, the wardrobe people I spoke to, the producers, yeah. the prop people. They all wanted. I said, if I if I uh, create a uh, a platform by which you could just tell me your needs, you know, in terms of the production. I, I will have brands at the ready for you. Uh, so you go. So basically That's I awesome. am, I'm this platform brands facing camera is a way for brands to match with productions that have needs for makers to 
literally join the platform. They don't have to join. It's something they go into. They look up uh, what their needs are. They type in what they are, yeah. what kind of production they are, what their needs are, and you will be notified by the brands. This doesn't so, even sound like it exists yet. No, it doesn't exist, which is why I have to make wow. it. That's so awesome, It started though. as a tool that I was creating for myself, which was basically, listen, all these brands coming at me, I'm like, look, 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 you need to just tell me just for the future, what, who's your demographic? Who do you go for? What kind of pictures you want to do for? I'm not using a political word here. I mean it in a, like a more fundamental sense. Or do you want to be in more conservative stuff? Do you yeah. want to be in more it's socially demo- progressive it's a, stuff? It's a demographic thing. Correct. Yeah. You know, because I can't keep this stuff in, as we used to call it, my Rolodex. But it still is the Rolodex. And I'm like, look, if you want to get in, the way I used to work is, why do I, why have I worked with Coke for 20 years? Because they love me. I love them. I always take care of them and they know. So it's like, but it shouldn't be just limited to the big guys. I yeah. like helping smaller uh, indie brands. That's actually. so cool. So I had my lead actor and, I'll, you know, Carrie Ann Moss, like just work with her before she went back on her matrix uh, uh, promotion. Nice. And she was wearing the clothes of independent brands, uh, which was owned by, women you know small company and it's a company that uh represents women in the you know in workforces that usually are dominated by men in this case it was an oil field so i actually wanted to work with brands that wanted to represent i didn't want to just call the old school they don't need me and i don't need them and we got that we got them dressed up and these brands were thrilled. So basically I had to go to the brands and say, listen, just tell me what you're looking for. What do you want? Do you care if you're on, you know, if it's a short form web series, do you care if it's a feature film? Can it be a $1 million thing? Can it be hundred million dollars? Do you care if it's a, a, a YouTube, yeah. you know, it's a YouTuber who has a channel and does things and naturally has products. So I've gar- garnered all the brands that, that need that exactly what they're looking for. So now I have to create a platform that just opens it up to productions. Inspi- it's, it's inspiring as a, as a yeah, filmmaker yeah. To, to be yes. able to, yeah. uh, to find something like that readily available. So I, I think that's so cool. Brandsfacingcamera.com. We will make sure to uh, and I wanted to put remove, that in the notes. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes. And I wanted to just make sure and talking about, hey, you should hire and pay them. The whole point was. I wanted to remove the financial burden away from these independent filmmakers who are already putting in so much, put it on the brands. Yeah. Have them I love it. pay for access to this. Maybe, you know, that not maybe that's the way it'll work. That's so so cool. it'll be free. It's free to filmmakers. It'll be free to any, anybody. That's uh, awesome. To, to use and brands who want to participate, you'll know before you have it. So that cuts out 95% of the work. Yes, you can always go on there and talk to me. You can email me. You can uh, ask me for consultant advice. Of course, I'm around to, to consult yeah. as a supervisor for you. That's great. Help you out and answer any further and any questions. I love, the, I love this business and I want to help. I love, I love independent movies. I love independent brands. Let's get these guys together. I really, I really appreciate you you being on this show, and I'm really glad you didn't have to like lie to come on my show. No, no, that part was honestly true. I don't think I, I actually didn't lie since then. Just so you know, be, oh, okay, be honest, because you will be found out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you said in the beginning, you know, you will be, you will be found out. But if you've got the medal, if you got yeah, what it takes, man, you can do it. You can do it. All you right, can man. do it. Hey, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter by using my handle at ScreenwriterPod. And if you liked the show, please support it by subscribing and sharing the episode on your social media. 